Hello everyone, my name is Ninua and welcome to my unhurried playthrough of Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn, Part 3. Previously, we completed the MSQ, Level 5, and had our first instanced encounter where we fought Enraged Trance. I also spent time doing minor side quests in order to gather a full set of gear, Level 5, and completed the level 5 Archer class quest. Now, I'm going to show you an easily overlooked feature of your journal. Sometimes you may need to look at completed quests to check whether you have already done them, or you may need information that appears in the description text. I'm talking about you, Zodiac Weapons. Or you may just want to be reminded of the latest events in the MSQ. For that, open your journal and in the upper right corner of the left panel, there is a button that allows you to switch between current and completed quests. The first list you see is for the MSQ, but pretty much all the quests are listed here, divided into different categories. Coming up, I am going to focus on the MSQ for most of this video, taking it all the way to level 10, and I will complete the level 10 Archer class quest. Both of these things are going to open up the game to us quite a bit, but we'll get to that in due time. For now, I am going to grab the next MSQ from Golfred. Level 7 Eggs of a Queasy. Golfried, chief instructor at the Bannock, wishes you to collect Chigwe egg sacs. The rewards 2,240 points of experience, 151 gill, some wind shards, and one high potion. As the name may have already clued you in, the high potion is a slight upgrade on the potions we already hold. The difference is the increased amount of max HP it can restore. It is not going to make much of a difference to us now, uh, as my HPs are lower than even the max restored amount itself. But high potions will replace potions for us eventually. Ninua. Injuries to several of my men have left me short-handed, and I require a capable sort to complete their unfinished duty. The task is simple. Put down as many of the local Chigoe population as necessary to acquire three of their egg sacs. Having done so, you are to deliver them to Moranga at Gilbert Spire. He will answer any queries you might have. Now. I have other business to attend to. And we are off. So looking up at the map, uh, you can see that the area where I can find the Chigoe yeah, is very close. So close, in fact, that we are already there. There is uh, nothing particular about Shigoe. They are very straightforward targets. So I'm just going to defeat three of them. Now I was thinking of ignoring uh, the fate entirely until I realized I haven't done this one yet and the annul are part of the archer's hunting log. So I'm just going to clear that entry and complete the fate at the same time.
All right, so that's one more fate completed. And if I look at my hunting log, So the top five entries, uh, the first five entries rather, are complete. Um, the level 10 is in the central shroud, but it's further south. And we're only going to go into that area uh, in a couple of videos. The trickster imp, we are going to encounter them in this video already. So we will be able to take care of that. As for the black eft and the water sprite, you can actually see them behind me. And that's a new achievement unlocked. To crush your enemies one. Let's have a look at the last couple of achievements uh, I've received. So the one I just got to crush your enemies. One was for defeating a hundred enemies in total. And the just talking about shafts. One, <laughs> I love that title, um, was for reaching a level 10 as an archer. Basically every time, every 10 levels you reach uh, with a class, you are going to receive a new achievement. Now I've opened up the list of crush your enemies entries because obviously there are several of those and uh, there is one the number six um, if you defeat 50,000 enemies you get a title and there is a special one uh, let the bodies hit the floor if you defeat uh, 100,000 enemies you get some gear we have our work cut out for us Ah, you must be the adventurer standing in for our injured companions. Terribly unfortunate business, that. Chigoe Egg Sack This translucent sack appears to be filled with thousands of tiny pearl-shaped eggs. Ugh, I'd rather not think about it, really. It seems, however, that you had little trouble gathering the egg sacs in their stead. Excellent work. I shall have them sent over to the Trappers League immediately. Lest you wonder, these egg sacs are not destined for the dinner table, which is good. Members of the Twin Adder and the Wood Whalers are assisting the League by collecting the samples they need to check for signs of sickness. The Chigoe you see is one of the few creatures capable of transmitting the disease known as the Creeping Death. Until relatively recently, any hue who contracted this ghastly illness would almost invariably perish. Indeed, a single outbreak once claimed the lives of a third of the Huron population here in Gridania. That was a long time ago, of course. With the medicines available to us now, the creeping death is not the killer it once was. Even so, it is best to halt any new outbreaks before they occur. Thus we gather Chigoe eggs on a regular basis in order to assist the Trappers League with their ongoing research. Your timely assistance is most appreciated. And so we got our rewards including that high potion I was talking about. And this matters because, well, you're going to see, we are going to talk to Harold for a small side quest, which is only going to take us a minute.
Level 7. More than a flesh wound. Arald needs an adventurer to supply him with a high potion. Huh. Oh god, the pain. I caught a scurry of squirrels gnawing on the fences earlier. I managed to drive them off. But not before they decided to gnaw on me instead. And now I am the bloody mess you see before you. To make matters worse, I find myself without so much as a single high potion. I know, I know, foolhardy. I vaguely recall using my last one after some trifling scrape several moons past. The gods alone know why I didn't think to replace it there and then. You wouldn't happen to be carrying a spare flask? If you don't have any on hand, the merchant at the bannock should have some in her stock. I can't leave my post, so if you could bring me a high potion, I'd be tremendously grateful. Well, it's funny you should ask, really. <laughs> and I'm going to give him the high potion. Yes, it's an upgrade on a regular potion, but we actually won't see the benefit of it until reaching uh, 500 max HP. So it's going to take us a while. We are at 178 right now. In the meantime, there are plenty of chances for us to get more high potions. I'm not going to miss the one until then, really. Seven hells. Did those accursed squirrels leave any part of me untouched? Ah, you're back. Do you have that high potion for me? Thank the gods. I owe you one, my friend. Here. I want you to have this. I had no idea squirrels could bite so hard. I thought I had seen everything. But it seems there are still surprises to be found in the Twelfth Wood. We both would do well to remember that. And so as a reward we get 560 points of experience, 146 gil, and a choice between um, two accessories, the bone necklace and a copper gold jet, as well as an elegant bronze piece. Um, to be fair, both necklaces I'm going to take the copper gorget by default, but they are actually statistically worse in most respects than the necklace you have by default. They have fewer bonuses and they don't add anything in defense or magic defense. So um, I'm actually going to switch, um, but it's it's not a great upgrade. The only upgrade is in the item level. And that's going to matter, but only much later when you won't be wearing a copper gold jet anymore. Or you shouldn't, at the very least. Level 8. Surveying the damage. A guard at Gilbert's spire named Moranga needs you to recover the surveying equipment left behind in a cave by a startled recruit. And for that, the rewards are... 2,720 points of experience, 179 gil, and a choice between an elegant bronze piece and do two body pieces. Level 8. Such an embarrassing turn of events. I sent a recruit from the Bannock on a surveying expedition only for the Craven to turn tail and flee at the first sign of trouble. This is not how we treat requests from the conjurers. And as if such a poor showing weren't bad enough, the lily-livered half-wit left behind the surveying equipment provided by Hira Pauline herself. While I attempt to instill some backbone into this so-called soldier, would you mind recovering the survey gear and returning it to Hira Pauline at Gabino's power? According to my recruit's tale of woe, there should be a set of surveyor records, a surveyor's rope, and two boxes of surveyor's instruments strewn about the interior of a cave to the south of here. Ah, oh, it's a wonder the damn fool didn't lose his boots. <laughs> Matron, watch over you.
And when he says it is to the south of Gilbert Spire, it is almost exactly to the south. Um, I'm going to uh, pick up a, a couple of water sprites to finish off my uh, hunting log entry. Since I come across them on my way. And we are arriving at the cave's entrance. And you can see in the distance we have this bug Yarzen level 7. And you'll notice that the icon next to its name is not the usual blue, it's um, a red triangle, basically, with a bit of yellow in there. And as you can imagine, that means danger, i.e. it will attack on sight unless you are at least 11 levels above its own. So if I were level 18, it would ignore me completely. But because I am under that, it's going to attack on site or however it perceives its environment. And you are going to see very quickly, the unfortunate thing with Borgiasens is that they have a very wide range of perception. <laughs> I was not even completely facing it and I was still pretty far away and it, yet it still noticed me and attacked. Thankfully, they're not very dangerous unless there are a lot of them after you, in which case things can get a little hairy. I really thought I could get past this one, but no such luck. As we can see the survey records in the distance here. Ah. So as you can imagine, there are four pieces you need to recover and they're going to be strewn all the way along the cave that we already close to the uh, exit here. So we have that one last piece that we can see in the distance and sometimes at that very spot you can have a fate ongoing with a single enemy. At the level I am at right now, this would be difficult to take on. So if it's there, try to avoid having it see you, otherwise it's going to keep attacking and thus interrupting you when you try to take the surveyor's instruments. Talking of interruption, I must apologize. You just missed less than a minute. It's me going to Gabino's Bauer. Nothing else happened, uh, but there was an issue with the recording. Yes, may I assist you with some matter? I'm going to be the one doing the assisting by giving you the survey records, a sprawling list of numbers which appear to be coordinates of some sort surveyor's instruments, a wooden box containing various tools used by surveyors including an alidade, a plumb and a block of marking wax, and the surveyor rope, a thin rope used by surveyors to measure distance. Oh, but this is the equipment I left with the soldiers of the Bannock. Fled as the first sign of danger, you say? I see. Well, all is not lost. It appears the recruit managed to complete the surveying assignment. The records are actually quite detailed. 
with the changes wrought by the calamity, I thought it wise to send the order of the twin adder on a number of expeditions to map the region's topography. As fortune would have it, the officers saw these tasks as an excellent opportunity to train inexperienced soldiers. We can no longer rely on our past knowledge of the Twelfth Wood. If we are to survive these troubled times, we must reacquaint ourselves with our surroundings, that we may better discern the threats we face. Stay vigilant, adventurer. So, again, by default, I'm going to pick the uh, Hemp and Acton as the optional reward, but I'm not going to wear it because I just don't like the look of it. I'm shallow this way. Uh, completing the MSQ unlocked a new side quest from Gabino, uh, but I'm going to ignore it for now. I'll come back for it later. I'm going to grab the MSQ instead. A soldier's breakfast, level 9. Pauline at Gabino's bower needs an adventurer to cull the growing anal population, as well as gather one of the skelkin eggs. The rewards are 3,240 points of experience, 186 gil, and a choice of level 8 weapon. Which, uh, since we are going to get a level 10 weapon very shortly, is not going to be of much use. So, um, I'm gonna grab whatever when we complete the quest. I hesitate to make such a dangerous request, but might you assist us in thinning the number of annals on Naked Rock? In our efforts to commune with the elementals, we conjurers often find ourselves in the area. Of late, however, our meditations have all too frequently been interrupted by unprovoked annal attacks. Truly the beasts grow more aggressive by the day. Their numbers have continued to grow since the advent of the Seventh Umbra era, you see, forcing packs of the Skelkin to come down from the mountains in search of food. If you could slay a handful of the beasts, that should lessen their need for to hunt, and also serve as a warning to the annals to remain within their territory. But I am afraid you must do more than thin the existing population. If we are to truly break the spiraling growth, then we must also target their future offspring. Bring me one of their eggs, and you will have played your part in returning balance to this area of the forest. And we are off to Naked Rock. The aptly named Naked Rock, all the way east. But a very short distance away. Now, Annals are level 9 here, and they are pretty aggressive. So I won't have to attack them, they will find me. Right on cue. <laughs> They have a pretty wide range of perception ahead of them. So that's why they, um, when there are a lot of them on a fairly narrow path, as it is here, uh, again. You will see later, there are some enemies. You almost have to go right past them in order for them to even notice you. Annals, on the other hand, even when you are pretty far away, they still spot you. So, the Annal Egg is here, I just need to uh, defeat this one. Gonna pick up the egg. And we're good. I can hurry back to uh, 
Gabby Nussbauer. But yeah, different types of enemies are going to have different range of perception and you are going to uh, develop a feel for that as you progress through the game. Let's uh, report to Pauline. Ah, you have returned. Now might my brothers and sisters continue their meditations undisturbed. You have my thanks. As for the egg, may I ask you to deliver it to Tsub Hamazon at the Bannock. And all eggs are both large and filled with nutrients. The perfect meal for a soldier. She will be more than a little pleased to see you, I should imagine. Okay, so remember Tsub Hamazon, we talk to her uh, when completing one of the side quests in the previous video in order to obtain gear. It was the region of labor and she is standing just a few feet away from Golfried at the Bannock. And we are already here. Who goes there? Oh, Ninua, it's you. Hm? Another delivery? An old egg. This malone sized egg of the viol violent scale kin known as the Anul is still slightly warm. I'm not certain I should be the one to... By no figure, that's an annual egg. The troops will be glad indeed to see one of these at table. And you say here Pauline sent you on this errand. I hear the annals are more numerous than ever. Yet you appear to have managed the task with your skin intact. Your skill and bravery continue to amaze me, Ninua. And so we can grab our reward. Again, I'm going to take whatever because it, I don't care for any of these pieces. What I care about more is the fact that we leveled up to level 12 and learned a new action called Blood Letter. And that introduces a whole new dimension to the archer's gameplay so i'm going to uh, take the time to explain that a little bit because this is pretty important before that i'm quickly going to address the other skill that we recently learned and i haven't talked about yet which is food graze there is a reason why i didn't mention it before it's simply because you almost are never going to use it um, it burns its target for 10 seconds. However, as soon as it takes damage, the binding is gone. So unless you are binding an enemy in order to run away, for instance, this is not uh, going to see much use. It's even more niche than leg graze, I would say. When it comes to blood letter, on the other hand, the situation is much different because Blood Letter is going to become a mainstay of your rotation. And the reason why is this. The weapon skills I've used so far as an archer, like Venomous Bite, a Heavy Shot, Straight Shot, they are all on the same cooldown called GCD or Global Cooldown. Uh, the global cooldown is 2.5 seconds. That means that I can only ever use one of these skills every 2.5 seconds. That's why at the beginning when you play Archer or pretty much any class in Final Fantasy XIV, things feel a bit slow because you have to wait 
2.5 seconds every time between two different scales. Blood letter is not on that global cooldown. It is what we call OGCD. That means that we can now start to weave our abilities. So I can use Venomous Bite, then use Blood Letter, and then use Heavy Shot, all within 2.5 seconds. Now, Blood Letter itself isn't that powerful. It's only 110 potency, which is less than Heavy Shot, for instance, which is 160. However, we are not using Blood Letter to replace Heavy Shot or any other weapon skill. We use it between two regular weapon skills, which are on GCD. So that's just additional damage. And as such, it plays an important role in increasing an archer's damage output. It is all going to make a lot more sense once you start to see me use it. Uh, but please keep that in mind um, because GCD versus OGCD is a very important concept uh, for most classes in Final Fantasy XIV. Let's resume with the MSQ, shall we? Ninua, thanks a god you've come. We have a potential crisis on our hands and I would appreciate your assistance. Will you hear me out? Warning, minor spoilers ahead, but just in case, stop the video and go to the spoiler cut one timestamp or jump to 34 minutes 46 seconds now. Level 9, Spirit Hold broken. Golfried, chief instructor at the Bannock, would entrust you with the task of investigating Spirit Hold. And the rewards are 3,240 points of experience, 206 gil and some earth shards. And that illustration certainly looks ominous. Listen well, for we haven't much time. To the southeast of here lies a dungeon known as Spirit Hold. It was all but destroyed during the calamity. Desiring to offer the runes back to the forest, a hero ventured inside to carry out the rite of returning. Alas, it would seem something has gone awry. Word arrived just moments ago that the hero and his guards have been attacked by a towering shadow. Aye, you heard me true. A shadow. On any other day, I would dispatch my best quivermen to provide support, but I sent them to repel an exile incursion in the West Shroud, nary a bell ago. The timing of these events cannot be mere coincidence. I fear the exile somehow caught wind of our plans and are attempting to disrupt the right in an effort to weaken the bond between man and elemental. They must not be allowed to succeed. And so I bid you go to Spirit Hold and do whatever is necessary to resolve the situation. Please, say you will help us. I knew you would not let me down. You will have all the support I can muster. Now, we are racing against time, so you had best make haste. You know, in this game, whenever an uh, NPC tells you that they're going to support you in any way they can, don't expect too much. In fact, don't expect anything at all. It's the best way not to end up thoroughly disappointed. Okay, so our destination is Spirit Hold, which is a secluded location southeast of the map, which we haven't had the chance to uh, visit yet. Uh, 
and here we are, spirit hold. Before we go inside the structure, we need to go talk to Alastair, another wood whaler. Who goes there? An adventurer, is it? Here at Instructor Gorfried's request, you say? Thanks, a matron. Doubtless you already know this, but a towering shadow manifested without warning and attacked the hero in the midst of the right. Most of his party has been successfully evacuated, but five remain unaccounted for. Please fr find them and see them out of harm's way. And in we go. So Spirit Hold is a domain of the Trickster Imp, which is one of my last target for rank one of my hunting log, but I'm going to uh, ignore them until after we complete the quest here. A great shadow towering over me. What in the twelfth good grace? A an adventurer? Please, you must save the hero. Wait, nobody told me the hero was still in there. Galfried sent you. I am no longer of use here. Pray help the hero in my stead. Away, vile fiend! Away, I say! I defy you! I defy you! Huh? Oh, an adventurer? We were ambushed. Ambushed in the midst of the ritual, and then... And then... I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, it was painful to, for me to read, too. That's just for you to listen to. You are sent to help? I fear you are too late. The ritual has failed. I must needs return to Gridania. The seers must know of this. A bugger off! That thing was no elemental, but a being born of darkness. So here, languishes alone in the depths. You must help him. So we are going to ignore uh, the fate completely. It's not easy to do as an archer level 12. Duty calls commence battle for spirit hold broken. Warning, there is some spoilers ahead for the main story. So if you want to avoid them, please refer to the timestamp, spoiler cut two, or stop the video and go to the 40 minutes, 55 second mark. Now, for the rest of us, let's go. O oh, mournful voice of creation, grant ye this humble stone a soul, that it may wake to life. I don't like the sound of that. And back and 
it's big, it looks monstrous, but it also, as you can see, hardly deal any damage at all, so don't worry too much about it. Just, just do your thing, it will be fine. The only thing you need to pay attention to uh, are the AoE markers, like this one. So the big orange marking on the ground. Also warning, as soon as this battle is over, a cutscene begins and it has spoilers for the main story. So if you want to avoid it, please, 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 as soon as the battle is over, go stop the video, go to timestamp, spoiler, cut 3, or to the 50 minutes 19 mark right now that the golem could be vanquished that woman is no ordinary adventurer of course not, since it's me. Ah, <laughs> oh, look who's here. Damnation, he has eluded us yet again. Oh, fancy meeting you here. How are things? Not a good time to have a fainting episode. Although it's probably better than before the battle. Mm -hmm. Whatever are you? Shh, more birds. This makes it how many times today? Seven? Their movements are beyond our fathoming. Hmm, do you think maybe they're trying to summon their primal? I hope not, for all our sakes. Yet we must be prepared for the worst. Wizard, the same fate has befallen Emerald Moss. It is as we feared, Delamut's anomaly is affecting life in the Dwarf's Wood. You mean the disturbance in the etheric flow? The very same. The Guardians have a lot to answer for. The imbalance they have created is plunging the land into chaos, just as Louise was forewarned. It's no wonder the primals have started appearing. Time is against us, but there is still hope for the land. We must hold fast to that hope and fight to the very last. Agreed. Wah! Ack! Stupid things. These stupid things happen to be the very latest in Shalayan innovation. Show some respect. But they are so uncomfortable and... and ugly. If you ask me, they are an improvement over that mask of yours. Hard to believe it's already been five whole years, isn't it? Already? Five years is but a heartbeat in the life of the planet. I suppose you're right. Not that I think about it. The Twelfth Woods barely recovered at all, and the Gridanians 
still have the same old problems. Aye, along with some new ones, just in case the Ixel and Garuda weren't troublesome enough. The Sylphs had to go and invite Ramu, didn't they? Do you ever think about those adventurers who fought alongside us? I do. And then five years seems like ages. I wonder what became of them. Ah. Oh. Ida, look. Hm? <gasps> Golly. And this is what exactly? Yet another disturbance in the ether, and freshly manifested at that. It seems to be emanating from Life Man's stump. We must hurry. And we've closed the circle. Are you alright? Your A's glazed over for a while there. The good news is that the hero is unarmed. Somewhat dazed, yes, but whole of mind and body. The bad news concerns everything else. Lest you forget, the Twelve's Wood is the domain of the Elementals. It is by their leave that man abides in the forest and avails himself of its bounty. The ground which the dungeon occupies is no different. Having no more use for the dungeon, the Gridanians sent a hero to offer the place back to the elementals by way of the right of returning, which is essentially an expression of gratitude. Alas, he failed to complete the ritual for obvious reasons. While the poor soul cannot be blamed for this, the fact remains that unless the elementals are given their due, they may well consider it a slight, and the very last thing the Gridanians can, can afford to do in these uncertain times is risk alienating the Twelvewood's eternal guardians. But you have more than done your part. We shall seize a hero to safety, and send for his peers to finish the rite. In the meantime, please make your way outside and report to Alistair. Ah, but where are my manners? I'm Papa Limo, and the tactless woman beside me here is... Ida. Papa Limo and I are surveying the Twelve's Wood together. Pleased to meet you. Ida, give me a hand, would you? Wait, there is something familiar about you. Could it be that you are... N never mind. Doubtless my eyes are playing tricks. Till we meet again... Bye-bye. And back, for those of you who skipped the spoilers. So I'm going to make my way out, uh, making sure that I complete my hunting log entry for the trickster imp. I just need two more. And we're going to return to Alastan. Yeah, I think in the first video where I talked about the hunting log, I said access was from level 11 for the rank 2. It's from <laughs> level 10. Sorry about that.
Archer 09, which means I just need one more entry to complete the rank. All this happened inside Spirit Hold? Twelve preservers. Who was that masked mage and by what dark ambition is he driven? So many things shrouded in mystery. Well, I shan't find any answers on my own. I must need to discuss this with Galfred. The matter warrants a full investigation, if I am any judge, and that shall certainly be my recommendation. Your courage has saved many lives this day, adventurer. For this, you have my deepest gratitude. Pray return to Gridania and seek out Mune. I understand she wishes to thank you for your efforts on our behalf. And since I am pretty far away from Gridania, the easiest way to return is to use a return spell. Is it the first time I'm using it? Wait, I don't remember now. Welcome back, Ninua. A little bird tells me that the hero and his party owe you their lives. A tale for the tavern, if ever there were one. It is only a shame that I must ask you not to tell it, for the time being, at least. Do I make myself clear? Until the heroes have made their will on the matter known, it would be best to avoid unsettling people with stories of walking statues. Now then, you must have suitable recompense for your valiant service. For the first half of your reward, I give you leave to make use of the accommodations here at the guild. Arrangements have been made, so all you need to do is speak with Antoineau whenever you crave the comfort of a firm bed and a soft pillow. For the second half of your reward, I offer you another path to fame and fortune, guild leaves. Guild leaves are records of the various requests we receive from the citizenry. They outline all manner of tasks which ambitious young adventurers like you can elect to undertake. Gontran is our guild leave official, or leave meet, here at the Carline Canopy. I have spoken with him regarding your knack for solving challenging problems, and he is eager to make your acquaintance. By the way, have you perchance heard about the coming festival? It is truly a splendid occasion, looked forward to by young and old alike and one I heartily recommend that you take the time to enjoy. Don't be too disappointed if the recent troubles cast a shadow of our proceedings, however. I fear nothing short of the mysterious interloper's apprehension can prevent that. But we were talking about you, Ninoa. You have made Mother proud. I expect great things of you, young lady. And this is a pretty key moment in the early stage of the story. The recommendation list is now accessible. You now have access to recommendations. This feature displays a list of quests and duties currently available in your area. The recommendations list can be opened from under duty in the main menu and will also be displayed automatically when you log in. 
If you find yourself unsure of what to do next, this tool makes it simple to locate activities suitable for your present class and level. So Mother Mune has the next MSQ, but I am going to ignore it for now. I am also going to ignore Gontran and his blue quest. And these are two things that we will do not in the next video, but in the video after that. For now, I am just going to go to the Archer's Guild because we have a new class quest available. And this one is pretty key. It's also going to unlock something pretty important to the game. Level 10. School of Hard Knocks. Guildmaster Lucien wishes you to learn how to see things from different perspectives. The rewards? 3420 points of experience, a plumed maple short bow, which is a weapon level 10, and a choice between different pieces of gear level 10 or 11. It pleases me to see how you have grown as an archer. Plainly, you have taken my counsel to heart and learned to see with your own eyes. I would now have you discover what it means to behold things from a different standpoint. You will recall Lei Aliapo, one of your seniors at the guild. I have given you over to her care for this lesson. Speak with her and do as she bids. I've been expecting you, Ninua. Shall we get on with it, then? First, a quick review. Remember how the Bowmaster had you seek out and destroy targets hidden throughout the city? Well, I would have you do the same. This time, however, you will need to venture outside the gates. I'm sure you've realized this by now, but there is no guarantee of safety within the Twelfth Wood. As you search, you should take care to mind your surroundings. You won't have the luxury of focusing solely on your quarry this time. You'll have to keep your eyes peeled for potential threats as well. That said, your objective is to destroy the targets alone. So avoid unnecessary combat and maintain a safe distance from any hostile creatures you encounter. Should you come under attack, Take to your heels, risking direct confrontation only if you can't outrun your pursuers. The targets are hidden in the central shroud. As before, use the heavy shot technique to destroy each one with a single arrow. Go well, Ninua. So yeah, if you remember from uh, the previous video, we had those targets hidden in the city, and this time they're going to be hidden in the central shroud to the east of the entrance. And we haven't quite been there yet, because it's one of these areas which uh, are beyond the bridges. There 
is one in the water below. And there's another one in the water in front of me, but there are quite a few enemies around. <laughs> so Bogazan, again, they have a very wide range of perception. And the Diamites, the thing is, they turn around pretty often, so... Um, you kind of have to anticipate where they're going to go next when you are in an area which is uh, pretty uh, full with them. I think this recording is one of the very rare times I managed to go through that area completely unnoticed. And return is still on cooldown, so I have to uh, rush back to Gridania by road instead. Whew, I was pretty sure I was going to get spotted by one of those damn diamites. Now, even if I were, it wouldn't be too bad. Even if two were after me, that would be fine. You just want to avoid having whole group of them because then things might start to get a little bit hairy especially if you haven't updated upgraded rather uh, your gear yet but in that case you can just run away I mean they will give up uh, after a little while As a Lancer, you can probably take on several of them at level 13. Um, because Lancers, one, they deal more damage, and two, they have better survivability. return and talk to a uh, lay it's a nice one basically well well you made short work of those targets I must say it seems you've learned to seek your prey without being preyed upon let's continue then I have a mind to give you more practical experience and we received a request just recently which I think will provide the perfect opportunity. It seems tree slugs and vultures have been congregating in ever-increasing numbers in the vicinity of the honey yard, causing no end of trouble for the locals. We have been tasked with culling the beasts. This request comes direct from Steelglade Fane. When the wood whalers and the gods quiver cannot spare the forces to attend to such matters, the conjurers often turn to us for help. And before you ask, there is good reason why they would rather not see to this particular task themselves. The creatures in question possess abilities which can cause problems for the magically inclined. But that's quite enough about conjurers' troubles. Lucian told you how to discern an enemy's keen threats, did she not? Well, now you need to do so while maintaining situational awareness, lest you be of a run. Consider this a comprehensive review of her lessons and mine own. Your orders are as follows. Head out into the East Shroud and there put down eight tree slugs and eight vultures, 
using all of your skills as an archer. Good hunting, Minua. So we haven't been to the East Shroud yet. And um, there are two ways to get there, basically. The one which makes the most sense, if you look at the map, we can open up either the tree slugs or the vultures, they're both in the same area. So the East Shroud is grayed out, because we have yet to go there. So logically, we could go to the Central Shroud, go east, follow the northeast border of the area, and eventually we would encounter an entrance to the East Shroud. There is another way, however, which is much, much faster. We can go straight from Gridania to the East Shroud. And for that, we need to head for the Lancers Guild. But we are going to ignore the guild itself. We'll continue east, take the stairs down, and go talk to Romaric, the ferry skipper. Now it says purchase passage to Sweet or Bloom Pier, but we purchase nothing. It's going to be completely free. I don't know why they say purchase, but anyway. I happen to be heading across the lake to Sweet Bloom Pier in the East Shroud. Do I want to board the ferry? Yep. You bet I do. And here we are. We're already in the East Shroud. And we have the achievement that goes with it. I'm going to ignore. So we have vultures in this area, which is indicated in orange on the map. Uh, but I'm going to ignore them for now. For a simple reason. There is from time to time a fate which appears roughly where we are now. So where tree slugs are also gathered. And it also has the vultures that we are seeking. So it's a nice way, if it pops up within a reasonable time, then it's pretty nice because that means we can do a fate and complete the quest at the same time. And the vultures have a lower level, so they're easier to defeat than the ones uh, near the Sweet Bloom Pier. Unless you want to level up faster, in which case go for the higher level vultures. So now I'm taking on the tree slugs. Again, these are only level 10. If I were to cross the path, they are level 12 or 13, I believe. But because we are already uh, a couple of levels ahead of the uh, of the MSQ. I prioritize going to uh, the lower level enemies to avoid being too far ahead. But that's uh, that's up to you, really.
So yeah, so far no <laughs> no fate. So I'm going to uh, pick up the uh, northern vultures in this area. They are pretty high level though. I think the ones closer to Sweet Bloom Pier are lower level. They're probably level 11, I think. Yeah, they are level 11. Oh look, <laughs> my progress bar has finally stopped being blue. So the uh, bonus is going to die out sometime during this level, except since I'm going to stop the video here and log out, <laughs> this is probably going to be blue again next time I log in. So you just need to uh, talk again to the Ferris Keeper to return to Gridania. And we arrive back at the Lancer's Guild. And we're just going to return to the Archer's Guild to complete the quest. Judging by your smug expression, I'd say you've acquired a feel for maneuvering to exploit enemy weaknesses whilst covering your own. Vultures are wont to keep their opponents at wing's length, and attacks will send you flying. The solution to this is simple, maneuver to the rear. Tree slugs, on the other hand, have an annoying knack of disrupting spellcasting with their secretions. As such, you would do well to keep the creatures away from any mages in your party. Needless to say, good positioning is a key to success in battle, which is why it is absolutely essential that you know your target's traits. 
The knowing of these traits is a fundamental part of hunting. Before the keepers of the moon conceived of archery, they dwelt not in the city, but a forest. For my people, hunting was a way of life. Hmm, in hindsight, I suppose this was more a lesson on hunting than on archery. Lucia knows well my past, so mayhap this was her intent. Hunting, too, is an art. Before I came to Gridania, I never gave it much thought. But the more I think of home, the more I begin to realize. <laughs> Forgive me. I'm not usually given to fits of sentiment. Truly, forget I said anything. But do not forget that a hunter must recognize her prey's weakness and strike swiftly when the opportunity presents itself. That concludes the lesson. Now, I suggest you pay Luciana a visit. She is doubtless eager to hear from you. So let's do that. It is good to see you, Ninua. I hope you have learned much from Lei. Oh, not him. You, adventurer, is it true? Are you the one who slew the tree slugs and vultures? Well, yeah. How dare she entrust the security of our people to the hands of a stranger? I knew Mikote were reckless, but she is downright irresponsible. Shame on her! Did I not warn you that it was folly to suffer that woman's presence in our guild, Lucian? Every time she wastes an arrow on game, she drags our noble art back into the darkness. Aye, and this girl too. She's an embarrassment to us all. That is quite enough, Silver. Your skill with a bow is undeniable, as is your love for our nation. Yet there is much and more you have yet to learn about archery. Ninua has matured greatly in the short time that she has been with us. You know this to be true. Well, that shut him up. I suggest you come to terms with Ninua's presence here. You will be giving her her next lesson, after all. Unless, of course, you have any objections. Good. As for you, Ninua, I would have you devote yourself wholly to training ahead of your lesson with Silver. Suffice is to say, he will not be an easy instructor to impress. On that, we can agree. Bye, sunshine. Before you take your leave, there is something I would tell you. You are as dedicated a student as has ever set foot in these halls. In recognition of your fervor for learning, I hereby grant you permission to join the other guilds. Naturally, you will need to obtain the express permission of the relevant guildmaster, but I doubt that any will refuse one such as you. In Guidania, you will find guilds representing lancers, conjurers, leather workers, carpenters, and botanists. You are free to seek membership in any that piques your interest. I ask that you keep but one thing in mind. Although there is merit in exploring new avenues, there is also virtue in pursuing a single discipline with all one's heart. The decision is ultimately yours to make. Whichever path you take, be it that of the bow or no, I shall follow your progress with interest, for in you I see the making of greatness. You now have access to the armory system. Quests to unlock the other classes can be undertaken by speaking to the receptionist in the corresponding guild. There exist myriad disciplines in Eorzea that adventurers can take up. For the most rewarding experience, however, it is recommended that you first focus on mastering your current class. And
and I'm going to take um, the leather jacket, although I'm not going to wear it, simply because I don't like the color. I told you I was shallow. So the armory is unlocked, gear sets are available, and we are going to read up about that. Gear sets allow you to save several different combinations of equipment and swap them at your leisure. A button to, for the gear set interface is located in the upper portion of the character window. This can be a very convenient feature for the players who regularly switch back and forth between various classes, as well as for players who wish to have ready multiple sets of gear for the different types of duties they undertake, such as PvP or instanced raids. Select the plus button to register your currently equipped gear as a new set. And let's do just that. So I go to character under character in the main menu. As you can see now we have this gear set list available to us and the plus button at the top. And I'm going to press on it to register my current gear as a set. And now if I want to change something about this set, for instance here I'm going to upgrade my weapon, all I need to do now is to update my current gear set by pressing on that button in the upper right corner of the uh, gears of the um, character interface. It may not seem that useful at the moment, but remember, we have just received permission to unlock all the classes in Gridania at first, but it also extends to all the classes in Eorzea. And for each class, you will want to have a different gear set, so we will populate that gear set list very quickly. Actually, we're going to do that in the next video, because I'm going to stop it here. We've already done a lot in this one. We've covered a lot of ground with the MSQ. We've also unlocked the first guild leaf quest and access to all the other classes in Gridania. But I'm going to ignore all that for now. We're going to do that in the next video. For now, I'm just going to use the inn. Let's ask Antoine about it. Visitors to our fair city invariably seek lodgings in the roost, keen to sample our famous hospitality. Adventurers, you see, are as migratory birds in need of a place to rest their weary wings. Whether you desire a quiet moment for reflection or to forget your burdens in a soft bed, I'm confident our rooms will meet with your approval. Adventurers are by their nature a restless breed, loath to see so much as a single moment go to waste. But know that repose is essential to one's continued well-being. Well, that's very wise of him, actually. I just need to apply that in real life. So let's retire to an inn room. We hope you have a pleasant stay. And this is your in-room configuration. So, there are plenty of things in that room, most of them completely useless to us right now. Uh, this is the orchestrion. The summoning bell, the crystal bell, the dresser, the armor, and the toy chest. All of that we are going to go back to this once we can use them properly. There is one thing that we can use, which is the Unending Journey notebook. And as you can see, basically what it does is that it grants you access to rewatch not exactly all the cutscenes, but a majority of the cutscenes you've encountered already in your journey. And 
not just for the MSQ, they are available for all sorts of duties, including, for instance, um, the ones that we had in the um, class quest. And the other feature that we can use, obviously, is going to be the bed. So, the bed allows you to uh, log out or exit the game, just like in the main menu. There is one particular option though, and that's a dream fitting. And that allows you to try out all the gear that's in the cash shop, so the um, online store. You cannot buy from the Dreams fitting, you have to go to the website, uh, but you can try things out so you know how it fits on you, which is a pretty nice feature. I mean, if you are going to uh, spend real life money, you might as well be sure that it's going to, uh, to look as you'd like it to, uh, rather than spend money and then be disappointed. And this is going to conclude part 3 of my unhurried playthrough of Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn. Next time we will be busy unlocking not all but most of the other classes available in Gridania. So we're going to ignore the MSQ for that video and focus on that entirely and then we are also going to look into guild leaves. Remember that other feature that is now available to us. So we're going to get sidetracked a little, uh, but it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to uh, add more depth to the game that we've had so far. I'm really looking forward to share that with you all. It's probably going to be in two parts and the first one will likely come out four or five days after this one. So I hope you all will be looking forward to that. In the meantime, I wish you all a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and until next time, bye-bye.